What up brothers, it's Clipper King returning for another new review for my channel on the figure you see in front of you and as you can see it's the Guardians of the Galaxy Star-Lord by Hot Toys. I received this figure on Tuesday uh, afternoon and did the unboxing video, a lot of people saw it so I knew I'd got it and the review were coming. I've been asked about this uh, review about 20-30 times, when am I going to do it? I think it's still quite a sought after figure and I'm quite lucky to pick this version up. I will say I offered the exclusive version uh, when it first came out, but I decided to let that slide. Simply down to price, I think it was well overpriced. 200, about £220 I think, release day prices, and I thought, it's not worth that to me. I didn't rate Guardians of the Galaxy high enough, and I didn't think the figure as a standalone figure were really worth that. So my intentions were always to wait for a normal version to start circulating. Maybe that would bring the price down, or just wait until one were found around a price that I prefer. That did happen with this. It went into the uh, the advert went up sort of back end of last week. Anybody want this standard version for this price? And I jumped straight on it. Now I will also say, and most people will be wanting to know this, have I bought it to keep or to review and move on? I will say at this point, I still don't know. I do really like this figure, probably more so than Gamora, and I do see a value in keeping this figure without the rest of the team. But also I know I probably wouldn't keep it long term so I might be better off selling it straight off. So I really, really don't know what I'm going to do. But obviously if you want to put an offer in then I will listen to everyone. So let's uh, move in, have a little look because he's turning. I wanted him uh, rotating at the start of this review simply because as you see the first pose I've got him with the helmet on. His bag's on his back. He's got the uh, faux leather trench coat on fully uh, zipped and fastened up. I will talk about that. <coughs> Excuse me. I will talk about that when I get into the clothing section. And I also wanted to show some of the uh, the bends and twists through the bottom section of his trench coat, also because some of the poses I might be taking the trench coat off. So that's what I wanted to show you. Like I said, really, really nice figure and really, really unusual. That is probably the main thing I like about it. So there's your introduction. Let's crack on to the review. Right, cracking onto source material. Anybody who watched my Gamora review sort of back end of last week will know that I scored that a three. I am going to score this a three also because it comes from the same license, the same film. I will say on top of that though, I do in my mind sort of rate Star-Lord higher than Gamora and probably higher than Drax, I think. Also Groot, but Rocket, I suppose. Rocket and Star-Lord were my favourite from the film. Uh, really did like both of them. I thought they bought that... Um, comedy element as well as the action that we're involved in and I just think they played off each other really well so if I were just scoring it sort of character for character I would rate Star-Lord very highly more so than Gamora but like I said because it is coming from the same film I am still going to score it a 3 out of 3 just to brush over my likes about the film it was sort of refreshing to move away from the standard characters we always see although I will say it was not a license I knew anything about before seeing the film and the film didn't make me want to go back and start reading the Guardians of the Galaxy comic. I didn't care about it that much. I just thought it was basically a vehicle to bring in Thanos or a way to get Thanos to Earth, so to speak. So to raise the jeopardy leading into the latter Avengers films. That's what I saw it as. Is it an enjoyable film? Yeah. Would I rave about it and tell you it's an all-time classic? No, because I don't believe it is. I don't even believe... It's one of Marvel's top films. But it just seems that in this day and age, every Marvel film that gets released, it just seems that we're raving about them more and more. When people said The Winter Soldier, Captain America last year, were the best Marvel film, I totally disagree with that. I think that Avengers itself is a better standalone film. And I also think the original Iron Man takes some beating as well. So I don't just want to... Not only do I not want to jump on this bandwagon and saying every next release is the best, I also don't really want to see the bandwagon because it's quite laughable at times. But that's just my uh, opinion. Uh, so yeah, like I said, on the source material, I'm going to score it a 3 out of 5. Rolling on to the packaging, and I'm not going to take too long on this, simply because if you've seen the Gamora review you'll know I scored the packaging a 3 out of 5. There's nothing about this that would make me change it. I think, again, it's average standard of cardboard, so nothing too frilly. It's just a slipcover 
it is the same size and uniform to what I would think the other Gal uh, Guardians of the Galaxy figures will come in. So yeah, you've got your titles at the top, picture of the character, in this case Star-Lord, moving down his name and his MMS series number and just the fact that it's a uh, movie masterpiece by Art Toys. I'm not even going to bother to show you any more of the box, that is basically it. I do like the artwork, it's a functional box, not the most presentational best thing I've ever seen in my life, so I'm just going to again score it a 3 out of 5. Rolling on to the likeness, and you've probably all seen this figure by now because it's not off the press, but I thought it would still be worthwhile giving you my opinion on it. I will say it comes out of the box wearing this head, and I think it is uh, Chris Pratt to a T. I think they've done a really, really good job on it. There's no mistake in who it's meant to be. I will also say I think it's very complimentary to him, and by that I mean I don't think his airline is as solid as that in real life. I think he's got one of them strategic hairdos and I know all about that because I do the same thing myself. When you get a little bit older and your hair starts going a bit thinner or you get a receding hairline, instead of just combing your hair, you sort of place your hair in strategic positions to cover up your receding hairline. I think in real life, that's what he does. But on the figure, you sort of don't get that. You've got a lovely, lustrous, full head of hair and I don't think he's got that in real life. But it still doesn't... Uh, it still doesn't say that it's not a spot on likeness. I will also say another thing that I'm not really keen on, and if you've just looked at the box, you'd realize that his sideburns are really, really distinctive and pointed, sort of coming down onto his beard, sort of really stylized sideburns he's got. The figure, for some reason, it's got him in the sculpt, but they're not really painted in, and I wish they were. And if I were keeping this figure, I think I would darken that section up because I think it would help the likeness even more. Again, they could have gone a little bit more stubbly, but there is still the appearance of the five o'clock shadow. I think the eyes are really well painted, as always with Hot Toys. Just a lot of depth in the eyes. Really, really glassy looking. Just a top job again by Hot Toys. Like, what can I tell you that's not been said before? On the likeness, I'm going to score it a 5 out of 5, and it's a pretty easy 5 out of 5, but like I said, I just a couple of little niggly nitpicks, but nothing to the extreme where I would start even thinking about knocking the points down. I will also say the air sculpt is amazing. All the way around it, the way it's feathered and combed and pushed into place is really, really good. I don't know why this camera seems, seems to be going out of focus. I just wanted to also show you the... Uh, the device behind his ear, I'm not even sure what it's called to be honest, which does sort of spread out around his head to become the helmet. Again, I think they've got the scale really good. It doesn't look too obvious, but it does look really nice. Again, showing you the air while we're around here. Really good texture and also a really good appearance of like a, an highlighted section through the uh, top of the air like it's being dry brushed. So yeah, you get a lot of tone through the air and I think it's a really nice touch. So well done Hot Toys. Got you said another top likeness. Like I said, five out of five. Form of way. Just got him in the floating pose or hovering with the uh, jets on his boots. Just wanted to do that before I start stripping the figure down. Rolling on to outfit, and this is going to be one of the hardest categories to show you, simply because it's multi-layered and there's a lot of nice things about it that I think it's really worth showing you. I know you don't come here for an 8, 9, 10 minute review, I know you come for the thorough, full fat, coke review, so to speak, so that's what I want to gear. So, as you can see, he's got the red faux leather trench coat on, I'll show you close in a minute, he's got the grey t-shirt underneath, he's got the brown trousers and the brown boots, and then he's got his... Underneath, you can't really see, but you will in a minute. He's got sort of a, a gun belt with his holsters on the side. I'll show you that when the coat's removed. Sculpted gloves, which are done really nicely. And then, as you can see, yeah, he's got the harnesses around him, which lead to his backpack or satchel or space bag, or whatever you want to call it. So, let's talk about the coat when he's wearing it. I think everything is really nice about it. The design on it, the materials used, everything's top quality. Only nitpick, these. Simply because there's so many of them, and the fact that they send you some replacement ones leads me to believe at some point some are going to come off. Now, 
touch wood up to this point and I've not messed with it a lot I've just done a few poses for this review and I will say not one has come off yet so it might not be as worrying as I thought it were going to be but like I say you can see all the design the cut and stitch is awesome the material is nice and supple just really really good really accurate looking just a really really nice touch now We'll move on to the bag because I'm going to show you how to remove it and therefore you'll know how to put it on. It's It comes with sort of a strap that wraps from this side of the bag all the way over his shoulder as you can see. And to this, the bag does have sections and a zip section. I'll show you that when the bag's off him or when I get to the accessories. And then this strap that comes from here, which is fixed here, and it straps in there. Now, inside this little tab here, there's a metal press stud now if you remember what i said in the batman review about the plastic press studs that Otto use the dog shit that is the case they're absolutely terrible but these metal ones are quite good so it's just a case of the pop that oops i can't really get my nail in it while i'm holding it pop that obviously the loop opens and it comes out of this latch section here and then you just lift it, you can remove his head or you, it will actually also just go over his head because there's enough slack and it would be if I could get hold of it. So, let's put the figure down there. Like I said, that is the bag. It does open, it does have a zip section here that's uh, sort of halfway zipped. Again, really nice materials, really, really nice touch. You can have him with it or without it and it doesn't kill the look of the figure, so I do like that. And then the coat can be worn two ways. If you want, if you want it closed, like the early posers, you have to remove the gun belt, which is again done by, uh, done by press studs. Then what you do, you take that off, you pull it together and zip it up. I'm not gonna do that on camera because it's already been done in the review. And then once it's zipped together, I will say as well at this point, at the back of the coat, there's press studs there that go onto the belt and there, which while he's got the coat on and the gun belt, it keeps it sort of pulled back so the coat stays open. Look, you can't pull it together because of them two press studs. So what you need to do is, so you need to pop that one there and pop one there and then if you want it would pull a lot closer as you can see so once that's zipped inside there is a full working zip there's a magnet here here and here and then the coat will flap over on that side and hold closed which keeps the full closed look of the coat again nice look if that's what you want to go for i slightly prefer it open simply because it also shows the really good t-shirt that he's got underneath uh also this is a loose section it will come off or it can be moved this is fixed and this is fixed so don't try and pull those off i'm gonna look at the uh, carvings and sculpt work again really nicely done and like i said sculpted gloves so what I'm going to do is put a short pause in and then we'll take the coat off. Another thing about the coat before we roll on, it is wired down certain sections. You can feel the wire in it. So like here, section here, one here. So yeah, you can also pose the coat. So let's get the coat removed and we'll talk about the rest of the outfit. As you see, his upper body is covered by this nice sort of Kind of like a gym top, it's that sort of spandex material and then sort of the rib section, this really nice uh, rubbered section, again looks well fitted, you can see his abs through it, looking quite beastly, long sleeve as you see, and just because most people are going to have it wearing the coat, Hot Toys don't uh, skimp and scrape and not gear a nice garment on top, so that is a nice touch. Probably. The main reason I took the coat off is to show you the belt and the trousers. As you can see, it has a uh, faux leather brown belt, metal effect buckle, moving around, 
then it has these sections down his legs which don't move around because the velcro at the bottom i'll show you that in a minute and then the blasters fit on they just the blasters just come off like so they just fit on like that like i said this leather is velcro to hold it in place and if you want to have the coat closed like i was saying before you pop this press stud which comes off pretty easy take the velcro off take the velcro off there and it means that the coat can hug the figure a little bit tighter so nice touch the brown trousers looking at them fasten across here as you can see that's how you would open and close them nice pattern section at the top with the velcro there nice detail i will say these are fake zips and that one is lifting off a tiny bit but it's got like a sticky material underneath so just keep pushing it back down yeah the uh, silver highlights at the side of the knees pleated section over the knee and then if i just move the camera forward a touch you see the boots now the boots are all one piece it's a really nice sculpt and really nice paintwork you see the blasters on the side which is really well done only thing it hinders the ankle articulation but to be honest on this figure i don't really care too much because the pose i want is done and if i had it i would probably have it more as a flying style pose anyway i think or a gliding kind of pose so really nice outfit just show you again the close on the uh, gloves really well done so yeah really nice outfit not only does it look really good but it is very very functional it's like on this one they fought her everything and they didn't need to ring uncle clipper to say listen we're gonna need to do something with this coat to make it be able to change its look or we're gonna need to take belt off what's the easiest way to do it and i said look this is what you need to do mr hot toys and talk them through it spoon feed them i didn't have to do it on that they fought it all themselves so respect to them like i said every part of it is really good I suppose the coat is the eye-catching part and it, again it would be a very very easy five out of five for outfit rolling on to articulation and again this figure ticks a lot of boxes it's got a really really good strong sturdy looking body on it with plenty of articulation the most of the restrictions are caused by the outfit so i'm thinking ankles in the boots sometimes when the coat's on it's a little bit uh, hard to move it around the upper arm and also when the coat's on, the sweatshirt underneath sort of rucks up around his shoulder section, again creating restrictions. But as you see, the coat's off. I've swapped him out to some Captain America Winter Soldier gloves, just because he's got the pointing hand, and I can go all MJ on your ass. He's got the Sony Walkman on, and he's just busting out some moves. So I do like that. Things I do like, the body has a double bend elbow, which I love. I think unless figures have bare arms and would need a rubberized arm then i do like the uh, double bend elbow the shoulder mechanism works really well there is it the head does attach at the upper part of the neck so you do have that awkward looking line which is a little bit notable um but to be honest because of the sculpted body i kind of expect it so i can sort of forgive it crunch section as you can see sort of through the sweatshirt good tilt and swivel rotation in the uh, upper pelvis the top of the legs move quite freely slightly restricted by the trousers knees are double bend and like i said the boots cause a little bit of ankle uh, restriction as well but all in all really good and i will say i think size wise they've gone for the best body available because it has got bulk although not not terminator size bulk but he has got really, really good definition. Like I said, even when the coat's on, you can see his abs through the uh, sweat top. So really do like that. Just want to show you plenty of the pose because I do like that. And tell you the articulation. Mm, I'm going to give it a four simply because, like I said, the uh, the upper articulation on the neck does create that ugly joint. And obviously the uh, ankles are injured and the, when the coat's on it also injures it a little bit. But not too bad. So like I said, really, really strong 4 out of 5. Right, rolling on to extras and I'll probably go straight into value. So before we start talking, just, show you, just got him walking forward. 
See, I've got his extra stuff all laid out. So let's talk you through him. Start off at the top, I think. Little trick for you there. So as I've said, you've got a great looking figure with a great looking outfit. Does he bring a lot of stuff to make him value for money? Um, it brings stuff, but it's there's other stuff he would want as well. So let's talk about what he does have first. As you can see, he has the Sony Walkman, which as most people know and most people have said, is the wrong colour. I will move in and show you the... Is it going to focus? Come on. Oh, I can't see because of the phone. Move his coat. One minute. No, oh, it's not focusing. The awesome mixtape. You can see that inside. That's basically what I'm trying to show you, but it's not picking up for some fucking reason. Oh, it is now. It is the wrong colour. I think it should be a blue and silver, but I think that's down to uh, Sony's copyright laws. I didn't want him to use it. And also, the id section is black and should be orange. So, it is good that they give it, yeah. It is a bit of a pisser that it's not totally accurate. So, moving down, like I said, got the awesome looking figure. And we move to the base. Same as Gamora's. Um, the new style Hot Toys base for the Marvel figures. Again, really do like it. Really, yeah. Uh, coarse material on top i think they will fit all in very nicely when you've got them all so yeah i suppose you could consider that a diorama base the next biggest extra you get is the secondary head or the masked head whatever you want to call it so i will show you that working have a look as you see inside there is a switch which i'll try and put on that's where the light's on. Quite nice. I'd say it is a nice uh, addition because it's not too similar to the primary head. So yeah, it gives you the choice of which you want to use. I just think it would be a shame to um, not display the uh, unmasked head because it's so nice. I will say as well, the lights do dim quite quickly. So just bear that in mind. And then obviously the back. Can't fit that on one-handed. Moving down to the instruction manual, always uh, check that out. Set of wrist pegs, and then the twin blasters. I left one in the hand because the blasters will only hold in a certain hand because of the shape of the handle. So obviously this is the right hand one, and obviously fits on his uh, ulster, the right hand. On the right hand side sorry and then this is the left one you see the configuration of the handle means it sort of scopes onto the hand really really nice talking about the hands he don't bring many and he don't bring enough got the fisted hands on got the trigger hands and then got the one for the plasma orb which is there so it doesn't bring the orb like the exclusive does, but it does bring this sort of glass effect one with a metal running through it. And I think I'll show you, there is an hand for holding it. So there you go. You get a set of these little buttons. I don't know if it'll zoom in. The light's a little bit too bright. Set these little buttons in case you need any replacements for the coat. I don't like when I see them, I've got to be honest, because you think, I know I'm going to need them, but if Hot Toys know I'm going to need them, then why didn't they do something about it at source? So, don't really like that idea. The bag, like I showed earlier, really, really nicely done. Nice pattern. It is functioning, faux leather. The straps work really well, and they've done a good job on it. So, that is just about all the accessories or the extras. Um... I'll say it like this, I do like everything it brings, I think it's all good quality and does the figure does need everything it's got. I can think of two things that I wish it had also bring, uh, brought, sorry, I wish it had brought more hands, whether they be gloved or uh, ungloved, simply because there's no gesturing hands, so you want to get them in a dance pose, there's none of these hands really fits that, so I didn't like that, I had to borrow hands from another figure. 
even if, like I said, they give us the stock uh, ungloved hands, that would have been enough. Just about four or five other hands on top of the ones we get. Because, like I said, I don't know, it's a little bit limited and that does limit your poses down. Also, the other thing I wish they'd have brought is the waist length jacket. Because I do actually think he wears the waist length jacket a lot more than he wears the full length jacket. So that would have been a really nice touch. Um, so yeah, what he brought is good, but there is, like I said, a couple of things I could have thought of that would have improved it even more and made it a five. So I am going to give it just a four out of five. Uh, I'm going to move straight on to value and tell you, I personally think if you picked up the exclusive version for somewhere around the £220 mark, which is just about what I offered it at, I think that were way too high. I think the stuff that it brought, the cuffs and the orb, I don't think made it that much uh, more valuable. And I passed it by. I thought, I'll wait for the standard one. And if that comes out at a ridiculous price, ridiculous price, then I'll be passing on that too. Like I said, I got the chance of picking this up at a pretty reasonable price. Uh, and I see now, at the point where I went to review on this, the price were actually around 180 190 on eBay for the standard version. I'll be honest and said, for me, that's still a little bit of a price, but bear in mind, you've got to ship that from Hong Kong at this point. It's still not in UK, so factor that in as well. Uh, bang for book-wise, you're getting a really nice figure, and the stuff it brings are also really nice. Nice outfit, a lot to really like about it. In fact, I will say, when I bought this, I really had no intention of keeping it. Now I've reviewed it, I think, oh, it's going to be a shame and a nice figure to move on. But I really don't want the line so I really don't know where I stand on it. Um, on the value at the price I paid, I'm only going to give it a 4 out of 5. And that's a bit of a generous 4 out of 5. But that's just how I feel. So, not much more I can say. Please check out Budget Stark's channel or Anthony Sang. Uh, he did send it me. A massive shout out to him for that. And I will tell you the overall score is 28 and a possible 35, which is a really, really good score. And like I said, a very tempting figure to keep. But if you're interested or you're buzzing or you're going crazy and you've not picked this figure up, make me offers. I'm not going to beg anybody to take it off my hands because it's not that sort of vibe. If you want it and you know I'm a trusted seller, talk to me over the next couple of days because you know that this won't stay in collection for long. But anyway, this is a Clipper King, another review for you. And for now, I'm out of here.